Hello, my name is Joe Borowski and I'm an Augustinian pre-novice in my second year of formation with the Augustinians. I am with the three vocation directors for the provinces of North America. I'm with Father Tom McCarthy from the Midwestern province of Our Mother of Good Counsel, Father Joe Narog from the Eastern province, our province of St. Thomas of Villanova, and Father Philip Yang from the Western province, province of St. Augustine. We'll be meeting together virtually today to discuss some topics related to the Order of St. Augustine. We hope you find this video informative and useful and that you may use it as a tool in your discernment. Wherever you are in your restless journey, come and spend some time with the Augustinian friars. Are you ready to become what you are not yet? Are you ready to ask God if he wants you to be an Augustinian friar? So Father Philip, today I'd hope we could talk a little bit about ministry. And I was wondering, how does ministry and community play together in an Augustinian lifestyle? Well, I think that's an excellent question. And I'll start off by saying that our ministry uh, uh, feeds into our community and our vice versa, the community feeds into our ministry. But to further explain that, um, I'll never forget what Brother Bill Harkin said to us when I was a pre-novice. Um, he said to us that we as Augustinians, we study the rule, we live the rule, but we also bring the rule to the people. So whether I'm doing school ministry, parish ministry, hospital ministry, doesn't matter. I'm, I'm always bringing the rule to the people. And uh, there's, there's, there's goodness in that because the rule emphasizes for us to love one another and to live in harmony and to be in harmony. I'm, I'm very conscientious about the people who I am ministering to. I'm conscientious about their interiority. I'm conscientious about how I am with them and vice versa. So again, that goes back into the whole, uh, the ministry feeds into the community and vice versa. Um, I, I think our ministry and community are intertwined. We, we can't separate the two. And there's this healthy balance of contemplation and action. I mean, truly we are contemplatives in action. Um, and that stems from our novitiate experience, the rule, our community life, and we bring all that to the people. You mentioned a couple of different uh, areas for ministry that you've already encountered. I was just wondering how many different areas of ministry could an Augustinian realistically get involved in? I, I think that's another good question. It, it was part of my discernment because one of the reasons why I didn't join my local diocese was because I saw myself doing something more than parish work. And, and there's nothing wrong with parish work. Parish work is excellent. But I've, I felt called to doing other kinds of ministry. Um, like for instance, right now I'm the vocations director and I really enjoy it because I love encountering people. I also have had uh, strong inclinations towards pastoral counseling. Um, uh, I mean, I've met so many friars who have had different experiences with different ministries. Like for instance, Father Jim Clifford up in Oregon who does uh, hospital chaplaincy. Um, that's another form of ministry and a very specific ministry. So if you see yourself doing more dynamic ministry other than just simply working at the parish. And again, nothing wrong with the parish. But if you see something other than that, um, definitely the Augustinian life is for you. And I know earlier we mentioned that the Eastern province is named after St. Thomas of Villanova. That's undoubtedly connected to Villanova University, correct? Right. <laughs> so do you guys also teach at, at university and, and high schools and uh, get involved in, in uh, education as well? Absolutely. We have our fair share of academics, too. Um, I mean, it, it's not just St. Augustine, but St. Thomas of Villanova. Um, you, you have several academics uh, within the history of our genealogy, our spiritual genealogy, that is. And um, several of my own classmates uh, have gone on for further studies because they have a more stronger inclination towards the academics. Well, other friars might have more inclination towards administration or people-oriented more you know, people-oriented ministries. So it really depends on 
where the spirit is calling you as an Augustinian. Uh, great. So you get involved in a lot of different things. Uh, yeah. Father Joe, I was wondering, I, through my research of the Augustinians, I found that they're a mendicant order. Could you talk a little bit about what that means or what other orders might be mendicant? Yes, Joe. That's uh, another good question. Uh, we were founded in the 1200s um, in Italy, looking again to St. Augustine as our spiritual father. It was a group of hermits that were bonded together for the need of the church at the time, which is still the case for us Augustinians. That we go where there's a need, where we're called to serve in the church and in the world. And at that point, they were looking for uh, friars who could go out throughout Europe as the urban centers were growing. And a mendicant means basically someone who begs for their existence. We rely on the generosity of others to support us in our ministry so that we could be itinerant preachers that would go to all these different urban areas and preach the good news, the gospel. So at the same time in the 1200s, we had the formation as well of the Franciscans, the Carmelites, the Dominicans, each with a different focus, a different charism. We've talked about the charism of our community, our hospitality. And we really relied on the hospitality of others as mendicants, as Augustinians, as we serve the church again and serve in the world. Thank you. Father Tom, I know uh, that you, as an Augustinian friar, have taken a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So I was wondering, how are you assigned to your different ministry with that vow of obedience in mind? Are you just told where you'll serve? Well, in the old days, you know, like, like pre-Vatican II, the older friars will talk about how they received an obedience letter and it was slid under the door of their bedroom and then they had two weeks to, to report. Those days are long gone. The way we do it now is Augustine was all about being with one with your brothers, talking, listening. So when it comes to individual ministries, the superiors, the provincial, would talk with the individual friar the friar would say what his dreams are, his desires, his, where he thinks his gifts lie. And then the provincial will talk about what the needs of the community are. And so really to say real quickly, when we're asked to do something, we have to say, one, can I do it? Two, will it cause me any spiritual harm? And three, is it a need of the community? And if I say, yeah, I can do it. No, it won't cause me any harm. And yes, it is a need of the community, then the vow of obedience says, well, then that's the community calling you to that ministry. But there's a great dialogue. And because, you know, uh, to be put into something that you can't do, like to put me into teaching physics, I'm not going to be good. <laughs> not gonna be good. So wow. it's a big dialogue between brothers. Thank you for that. And thank you, Father Joe and Father Phil as well. This has been very informative for me, and I hope this was also informative for you. Remember, wherever you are on your restless journey, if God's asking you to be an Augustinian friar, you can always find more information out at our website at www.beafriar.org. Thank you, and God bless.